guys I uh, welcome back to another video I hope you're all doing well and keeping it safe so I'm here with Jessica girl because just wanted to kind of like have a chill out vibe for this one um so I'm going to be talking about the Sarah Everard um case that is um ongoing at the moment and it's a really sad case and it kind of hits home for a lot of people especially women because we unfortunately live in a world where women feel very uncomfortable walking late at night or just walking like at any time um whether it would be like to the shops or walking home from a friend's house like this case here and it makes me really sad that it's 2021 and still we have this thing where we don't feel safe so maybe we will cross the road like if a man's walking behind us or we won't like wear revealing stuff or a short skirt or we will go to like well lit roads just to feel safe or we'll text the route like text our friend or family the route home or keep our find up my friends on all stuff like that which yeah this case is really gonna be home for a lot of people um so i'm gonna be talking about this case so um according to the bbc sarah was a marketing executive and she was last seen in person leaving a friend's house um in clapham london um around 9 p.m on march the 3rd so she planned to walk back to her um house where she um lived in brixton um and this trip mostly took her 50 minutes to walk um so what happened was she apparently she walked um and crossed at clapham common and she was spotted on security footage around 9 30 p.m so she spoke on the phone to her boyfriend um so she kind of spoke to her boyfriend for about 15 minutes um while she walked and they were making plans for the next day to see each other and um so at the time of the disappearance she was wearing a bright green jacket um a white and blue patterned trousers green headphones and a white beanie so police kind of asked the public for any help that could kind of um bring her home or any like other hints to, to it so on march the 5th they tweeted that they were increasingly concerned as her whereabouts so on march 6th her family insisted that she always kept in regular contact with her family and friends um and it was like totally out of character to disappear like this and um so then the police began to circulate the cctv footage um of sarah and kind of urged people who was around them places um and the area to check their security cameras if they had any for possible sightings of sarah so while this was ongoing, the police actually searched more than 750 homes in South London. Um, they searched the rivers in Clapham Common um, and they actually widened their inquest in Kent. Um, and this is when they made their arrest on March the 9th. So later that night when they were making their arrests, the police actually announced that the arrest was of a um met officer and he was on suspicion of kidnapping but then it kind of escalated to a murder on like a suspicion of murder um they also arrested his wife um on suspicion of assisting him in this um but at the time the police didn't actually identify the suspect um and then they kind of like when they were kind of like getting more into it they actually um released it and it was a 48 year old uh wayne cousins um and he was a member of the parliamentary and diplomatic protection command that patrols government premises 
um, such as tearing down the sheets over the parliament. Um, and he was actually a suspect of indecent exposure in a totally separate case. Um, so police took him into custody at his home in Kent. The Met um, Commissioner came out and they, he said, she said, um, this is a serious and significant development in our search for Sarah and the fact that the man who's been arrested in a serving metropolitan police officer is both shocking and deeply disturbing. Um, she noted that the arrest sent shockwaves and anger through the public and through the Met. I speak on behalf of all my colleagues when I say that we were utterly appalled at this dreadful, dreadful news, she added. Our job is to patrol the streets and to protect people. The last thing we kind of know about Sarah is the fact when they were searching his home in Kent, they also searched a wooded area in Ashford, so this is in Kent, and they um, found what appeared to be human remains in the woods um and the met police commissioner just said you know it's going to take a long while and a considerable amount of time to identify if there are human remains who the remains are kind of um who they are um and the identification process but they do say that they are in constant touch with their fam, like with her family. They're in constant touch, just keeping them updated, um, and just kind of like if there is anyone out there who may have seen her. Um, there was a dog walker, so like hopefully the dog walker kind of comes out and just kind of like I saw her that night, and then they can kind of like maybe um, it maybe lead to the identification process and what she was like doing or did she look like um uncomfortable so that's the kind of where we're up to in the Sarah case at the moment um it's just really sad I've seen a couple of tweets that are really disgusting but these are actually majority of them from men um, there was one that said she shouldn't have been walking alone, she shouldn't have worn her earphones to listen to music, she should have been more careful, she should have been out, like, walking with someone. Like, we're blame, we're putting the blame on victims. This, because this is the easiest thing to do, like, you put the blame on the victim for not doing certain things, because it's better, it's easier to blame them rather than the perpetrator, who done this because people can't get their minds around that there's people like that in the world who take advantage of women when they're alone especially in the dark times as far as i'm concerned there's a pandemic going around right maybe she didn't want to get into a taxi because of the pandemic and there's going to be close contact with the taxi driver maybe she didn't want to do that maybe she wanted to go for a walk instead like we don't know what's going on like we shouldn't feel uncomfortable because of in case something happens because it's ridiculous like honestly what matters the most is that a woman was murdered for simply walking home alone and that really needs to change because why should we feel scared why should we feel like we need to ring someone or that we need to share our um a current location with people or we have to kind of hold our keys because we're scared of something that might happen we it's like honestly i can't get my head around the fact that we live in a world like this still like it's just crazy to me but now coming out of their story saying you know they feel they feel uncomfortable when they like they're walking um they feel uncomfortable when traveling alone and they feel like they have to cross the road if a man is walking behind them or in front of them and it just baffles me it just baffles me that we as women have to kind of plan our route to make sure that we are as safe as possible and we can't trust people if they're walking in front or behind because we don't know who they are it honestly just so I found this thing on Twitter that someone tweeted, I will share it on the screen as well because I think it's really important actually to highlight this. So when there is what women have to do to feel safe versus what men have to do. 
there was a poll and it was said nothing i don't think about it as men women hold my keys as a potential weapon check the back seat before getting in the car always carry a, um, a phone don't go jogging at night lock the windows when i sleep even on hot nights be careful not to drink too much never put my drink down and come back to it make sure i see my drink being poured own a big dog carry pepper spray have an unlisted number have a male voice on my answering machine park in a well-lit area never use parking garages don't get on elevators with a lone man or group of men vary my route home from work watch what i wear don't use highway rest areas have and use a home alarm system don't wear headphones when jogging avoid wooded areas even in the daytime never rent first floor apartments only go out in groups own a firearm always meet men for first dates in public places make sure to have cab fare never make eye contact with men on the street make certified contacts with men on the street make sure my family knows my itinerary have extra locks on my doors and windows make sure my garage door is closed all the way before i drive home make sure my garage door is all the way before because make sure my ghost door is closed before I leave. Um, so men don't have to think about going out and feeling unsafe, but women have all that list of what they do to feel safe. Like, I just, I don't understand. I, it just, I don't know, like, it's just crazy. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, There was this boy on my timeline and he said, I've never known what it's like to feel scared whilst walking home. I've never heard a text to text. I've never had to text a friend to say that I'm home or clench my keys in my hand. Really sobering that in 2021, women can't walk and be safe and we need to change this. We need to stop the victim blaming. We need to start blaming the perpetrators of this. You know, no matter what happened that night, someone was maybe killed or anything like kidnapped or whatever um and loads of people are attacking the women because she should have known what she should have been doing as a woman like yeah so i'm just gonna leave with the thought of don't blame the victim blame the actual perpetrator because we shouldn't feel afraid of walking home or walking or jogging or not wearing our earphones to listen to music Mm -mm. so yeah i wanted to finish my video with that but i if you do know any information regarding this case i will leave all of the numbers down below and where you can kind of like give like details of maybe what you saw or what you've heard and stuff um but yeah I hope this has given you some informative things on the case and hopefully she is found either safe and well or there are answers to her family. Um, so yeah, I'll see you again in my next video.